हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर अजीत जायसवाल फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी पाण्डिचेरी यूनिवर्सिटी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ए मॉड्यूल इन टाइटल इमरजेंस ऑफ मैन अंडर पेपर फिजिकल एंड बायोलॉजिकल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी डियर इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी आर ट्राइंग टू फाइंड आउट द आंसर ऑफ सम इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन लाइक हु आर ह्यूमन्स where did they came from and when did they, did they came from what was their path of emergence in order to find the answer of this question let's start with the emergence of man a lower jaw found in africa could mean that genus homo the one that we ourselves belongs to evolved some 400000 year, years earlier than assumed previously this shedding new light on a period of evolution that has long remained a mystery to the anthropologist a fossil date back to a time when homo the branch of human descendant from split from split from their ape like ancestor recent fossil and archaeological finds have complicated our interpretation of uh, the origin and early of evolution of uh, genus homo several several of the key morphological behavioral and life history characteristics thought to first emerge with homo erectus example narrow by iliac breath relatively long legs and a more modern pattern of growth this seem instead of instead to have arises at different time and in different species further accumulated data accumulating data from africa and beyond documented regional morphological variation in early homo homo erectus and expanded the range of variation in this species they also raised question about when a modern pattern of life history might have emerged and what role what is the role if any it played in our early evolution now let's debate on the origin of man the debate on the origin there is a general agreement that homo erectus the precursor to modern human evolved in africa and gradually expanded to eurasia beginning about 1.7 million year ago by around 100 years 100000 years ago several species of hominid populated populated the earth what propelled modern humans out of africa and gave an age over other species the debate is complicated by different definition of what constitute modern behavior and differing interpretation of the archaeological record common element used to define modern behavior include the ability to plan ahead technological innovation establishing social and trade network adapting to changing condition and environment and exhibiting symbolic behavior like cave painting bead making or burying the dead the crux of the argument comes down to whether this these abilities resulted from a sudden biological and genetic revolution or a more gradual evolution of abilities that culminated around 50000 year ago and propelled the exudes from africa the earlier important modern homo sapiens sites are its distribution are as follows the sites from east africa south africa israel australia asia and europe in europe like we discovered the site from romania 
France, Czech Republic and France. In Asia, the important sites lies in Laos, Mongolia, China. Similarly, in Australia, we find Lake Munngo. Who are modern humans? We now we try to find out the answer of this particular question. All people today are classified as Homo sapiens. Our species of human first began to evolve nearly 200,000 year ago in association with technologies not unlike those of the early Neanderthal. It is now clear that early Homo sapiens or modern humans did not come after the Neanderthal but were their contemporaries. Compared to the Neanderthal and other late archaic human, modern humans generally have lighted skeleton. Their skulls are more rounded and their brow ridges generally protruded much less. They rarely have the occipital buns found on the back of the Neanderthal skull. They also have relatively high forehead smaller faces and pointed chin. The first fossil of early modern humans to be identified were found in 1868 at the 27,000 to 23,000 year old Cro-Magnon rock shelter site in southwestern France. They were subsequently named the Cro Magnon people. They were very similar in appearance to modern Europeans as males were 5 feet and 4 inch to 6 feet tall, or we can say that 1.6 to 1.8 meter tall, and that was 4 to 12 inch in the case taller than, than the Neanderthal. Means the, the, the males were about 1.6 to 1.8 meter, whereas in the comparative context, they are 10 to 31 centimeter. Their skeleton and musculature generally were less massive than the Neanderthal. So the Cro-Magnon, the Cro-Magnon has a broad face, small face with pointed chin region with high forelimb. Their cranial capacities, capacities, what is called brain capacity or intelligentsia or overall that, that give the example of encephalizations were up to 1590 cc, which is relatively larger than the even present day, present day Homo sapiens sapiens. So we can see that on one side, we have a, a very near, nearer Homo sapiens, Neanderthal. And we have another example where we have the human beings or Homo sapiens sapiens which are much more advanced than the present day people today. We have see, we can see the same differences in the next figure also. This figure will clearly explain, explain you the cranial feature of man and Neanderthal man. See the upper region of the face, see the nasal region of the face. You can clearly mark the differences even in the even in the jaws, upper jaw and lower jaw. See the chin region. All these changes, we can clearly explain the marked differentiations of evolutions in the in evolution of a human being from Neanderthal to the modern man. The figure explain the anatomical feature of uh, this anatomical feature shows that modern human have a distinctly rounded head that contain a large brain that averages about 1350 cubic centimeter. From the front to back, the cranial arch or vault is short but high. The occipital or the occipital bone is delicate compared with earlier hominids. The modern human face and eye sockets are smaller. The front of the upper jaw and the mandibles are also small. The modern human has a strong chin which is the bony projection of the lower part of the mandible. 
the modern human skeleton is less robust and the musculature is higher as compared to earlier hominid skeleton. The origins of this particular species shows that the current data suggest that modern human evolved from the archaic human primarily in the East Africa. A old fossil from the site in Ethiopia shows the beginning of the changes in the skull that can be associated with modern people including a rounded skull case and possibly a projecting chin. Dear, now let's see the shift in the human evolutionary history. There are three important shifts that we can observe, that we have observed in the human evolutionary history. First, an important one, very important one is the emergence of genus Homo itself. And the second one is the, the transition between non-erectus, non-bipedalism or little bipedalism, early Homo and Homo erectus. And ultimately, the third and most important one, which is very, very specific in evolutionary example is the appearance of a regional morphological variation in Homo erectus, including Homo ergastus. Using this interpretive data and in our integrated data, interpretive information or integrated data of SETA, we consider the implication for understanding the changing selective pressure that lead to the transition, transmission, changes to an evolutionary of early Homo. Several model related to their expansion. Since the early 1980s, there have been two leading contradictory model that attempt to explain modern human evolution. First is the replacement model and the second is the regional continuity model. The replacement model proposed that modern humans evolved from archaic human about 200,000 to 150,000 years ago only in Africa and then some of them migrated into the rest of the old world replacing all the Neanderthal and other late archaic humans. Beginning around 60,000 to 40,000 years ago or somewhat earlier. This hypothesis is also referred to as the out of Africa and African replacement model given by Edwards. Next is the, the regional continuity model or multi-regional evolution model propose that modern human evolved more or less simultaneously in all major regions of the old world from local archaic human. Supporter of this model believe that the ultimate common ancestor of all modern people was an early Homo erectus in Africa who lived at least 1.8 million years ago. It is further suggested that since then there was a sufficient gene flow between Europe, Africa and Asia to prevent long term reproductive isolation and the subsequent evolution of distinct regional species. It is argued that Intermittent contact between people of these distant areas would have kept the human line a single species at any one time. However, regional varieties or subspecies of human are expected to have existed. Use of mitochondrial DNA Beginning in the 1980s, Rebecca Kahn at the University of California argued that 
the geographic region in which modern people have lived the longest should have the greatest amount of genetic diversity today through comparison of mitochondrial dna or mdna sequences from living people throughout the world she concluded that africa has the greatest genetic diversity and therefore must be the homeland of all modern humans assuming a specific constant rate of mutation she further concluded that the common ancestor of modern people was a woman living around about 200000 year ago in africa this supposed predecessor was dubbed mitochondrial eve a simulation model that is new hypothesis it is apparent that both the complete replacement and the regional continuity model have difficulty accounting for all of the fossil and genetic data hence a new hypothesis known as the assimilation or partial replacement model has emerged it take a middle ground and incorporates both the old model gunter brauer of the university of hamburg in germany proposed that the first modern humans did evolve in africa but when they migrated into other regions they did not simply replace existing human population rather they interbred to a limited degree with late archaic human resulting in hybrid population in europe for instance the first modern human appear in the archaeological record rather suddenly around 45 to 40 thousands year ago the abruptness of the appearance of this cro-magnon people could be explained by their migrating into the region from africa via an eastern mediterranean coastal route they apparently shared europe with neanderthal for another 12000 year or more during this long time period it is argued that interbreeding occurred and that the partially hybridized predominantly cro-magnon population ultimately became modern european schematic representation of the emergence of homo sapiens from earlier sapiens of homo can be explained through the through this figure the horizontal axis represent geographic isolation the vertical axis represent times in million of year ago blue area denote the presence of certain species at a given time in place early modern homo humans spread from africa across different region of the globe and interbred with other descendant of homo namely neanderthals and unknown archaic african hominids people today are we genetically different from our homo sapiens ancestors who lived for about 10 to 20000 year ago the answer is almost certainly yes in fact it is very likely that the rate of evolution for our species has continuously accelerated since the end of the last ice age roughly around 10000 year ago this is mostly due to the fact that our human population has ex- explosively grown and moved into new kind of environment including cities where we have been subject to new natural selection pressure 
For instance, our larger and denser population have made it far easier for contagious diseases such as tuberculosis, smallpox, plague and influenza to rapidly spread through communities. This has exerted strong selection for individuals who were fortunate to have immune system that allowed them to survive. There also have been a marked change in diet from most people since the end of the last, last ice age. It is now less varied around the globe with a heavy dependence on food made from cereals grain. It is likely that the human species has been able to adopt to this and other new environmental pressure because it has acquired a steadily greater genetic diversity. A larger population naturally has more mutation, adding variation to its gene pool simply because there are more people. This happens even if the mutation rate per person remains the same. However, the mutation rate may have actually increased because we have been exposed to new kinds of man-made environmental pollution that can cause additional mutation. Finally, can we say what direction human evolution will take place in the future? This is a fascinating question to consider but impossible to answer because of innumerable unknown factors. Though it is certain that we will continue to evolve until. Okay, let's try to sum up the, this module by analyzing the people of today. Are we genetically different from our Homo sapiens ancestor? Who lived about 10 to 200,000 200, 200, years ago? Whether we are degenerate different or not, that we tried, that we have seen over here. The answer is almost certainly yes. We are altogether to some extent differ. In fact, it is very likely that the rate of evolution of our species has continuously accelerated since the end of the last glacial age that is about uh, roughly 10,000 years ago. This is mostly due to the fact that our human population has explosively grown and moved into the new kinds of environment including cities where we have seen subject to a new natural selection pressure. For instance, our larger and denser population, take the example of Delhi itself or some other denser places have made it far easier for contagious diseases such as TB, smallpox, very common nowadays plague and influenza to rapidly spread throughout the communities. This has exerted strong selection for individuals who were fortunate to have immune system that allow them to survive. There also has been a shift marked change in diet for most people since the end of the last ice age. It is now less varied around the globe with a heavy dependence on food made from a cereal grain. It is likely that the human species has been able to adopt to these and other new environmental pressure because it has acquired a steady greater genetic diversity. A larger population naturally has more mutation adding variation to its gene pool simply because they are more people. This happened even if mutation rate per person remain the same. However, the mutation rate may have actually increased because we have been exposed to a new kind of man-made environment like 
environmental pollution that can cause additional mutation. Finally, let's try to sum up the whole problem. Finally, we can say that what direction human evolution will take in the future? This is a very fascinating question to consider, but difficult to answer because of many un innumerable unknown factors are there. It is very difficult to give the answer about in which direction it will take place. Because we have seen the generation of certain disease or disorder ultimately lead to the altogether extinction, not extinction, anyhow decrease in the life expectancy of life, life expectancy of that particular group or even individual also. Though it is certain that we will continue to evolve until we reach the point of extinction. Thank you.